Beneath the scorching August sun, the 1998 W&J presidents prepared for perhaps the most difficult schedule in the school's history. The presidents would take on no less than five top 20 teams in their nine game campaign. The mettle of each and every W&J player would be tested on a weekly basis. 1998 would be a season of disappointment and discovery, achievement and accomplishment. And through it all, the presidents maintained their pride, poise, and the heart of a champion. The 1998 season was a season filled with great potential, a uh, good young football team with a great deal of talent. Uh, we grew as the season progressed. We didn't grow to the extent that we were capable of, uh, but we had got a share of a conference championship. Uh, we built a foundation for uh, an exciting future, uh, and the, the development with 19 to 20 starters back and 17 kids who made all conference in some manner, shape, or form indicates the talent, uh, the potential of this group, uh, and the great future that uh, lies ahead. Guys, we're going to be a hell of a football team. You guys have done a great job of leading. Now it starts here. This is where it counts the most, okay? We're going to do a job for you as a coaching staff. You guys be the leaders in this group. Let's yeah, have some fun. Right. Let's go. Let's go, baby. Come on, Let's go. Come on now. In week one, W&J's defense took the lead against playoff-tested Emory and Henry. Les Strader's interception return for a touchdown gave the Presidents a narrow 7-0 lead at the half. On offense, the Presidents were able to move the football only to fumble it away in key situations. Trailing 10-9 deep into the fourth quarter, Emory and Henry made a big play when it counted. As Oliver Jordan's halfback pass to David Miller put the Wasps in field goal range. Chris Epperly converted the 31-yarder with seconds left on the clock to give Emory and Henry a dramatic 12-10 win over stunned Washington and Jefferson. One last thing, I'm tired of telling you I believe in you. I want to come back in here after today and know that you believe in you. That's yeah. what counts. Yeah. You yeah. gotta believe. Yeah. Let's go play. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Don't let up, baby. With their backs to the wall, the presidents proved that they did believe in week two at Allegheny. The president's offense came out smoking with Jason Barr rushing for 150 yards and two touchdowns. He's to the 40, running toward the corner. Jason Barr trying to put the presidents in front. He's to the 10, five touchdown. Quite just what the presidents needed on their first series offensively. Brad O'Malley complimented Barr's running with a 9 of 17 performance, including a picturesque 57-yard touchdown toss to Ryan Silvis. Looking downfield for Silvis, catches the 35 to the 30, sprint for the flag. Ryan Silvis takes it for the touchdown. Silvis got a step on the defender. I just want to play football. Okay, good job. Meanwhile, the president's defense throttled Allegheny's vaunted attack. with a pickoff. Andrews goes in motion. Reed takes the handoff, stack up, and does not get in. 
and that will be the ball game because Allegheny is out of timeouts, cannot stop the clock. In the end, the Presidents atone for their opening game defeat with a resounding 23-14 win over the fifth ranked team in Division Three. A great chance to play, great opportunity, tremendous weather, national game, you couldn't have written a better script. You earned the right to be here. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 In week three, the president squared off with the top passing attack in the nation, and Hanover and Chris Stormer lived up to the hype. Stormer completed half of his 44 attempts while rushing for one touchdown and throwing for two more. Down 23 to nothing, the Presidents battled back, with Brad O'Malley finding Chad Adams in the end zone to trim Hanover's lead to 10 at the half. Ryan Silva's catch and run pulled W and J to within striking range, but the complexion of this game turned on the ensuing kickoff. Brian Arthur raced 87 yards to seal the president's fate, propelling Hanover to a 30 to 20 win over W and J. Expect this outfit. They're scrambling a little bit. They're going to do some things we haven't practiced against. We know that. Don't lose your poise. We'll figure it. We'll make adjustments as we go. Stay with your reads, offensively, defensively, but execution and laying your ears back and just playing the game is what it's all about, guys. Hey! In week four, the presidents again found their backs against the wall, and again they responded. This time against the Gannon Knights. The president offense pounded Gannon for 223 rushing yards, 154 of those by Jason Barr. Brad O'Malley completed 16 of 26 passes, including touchdown tosses to Ryan Silvis and Todd Matovich. Fake, rolls to the right, throws back across, has Matovich, touchdown! The good play by O'Malley, we talked about it last week. Meanwhile, John Banaszak's defense took control of the line of scrimmage, limiting Gannon to only five first downs while forcing two turnovers. Two men coming from the right side, has time, laying the ball down the near seam, looking for Callahan, it's intercepted. Pick off for Owen George, his second of the ball game. I think he might want to play all of his games on this field. The 34-11 win over Gannon put the Presidents back on track, and the WNJ defense stood tall in victory. 1998 Washington and Jefferson defense was a defense that gave us everything that uh, they could possibly give. They played with an awful lot of confidence. They worked hard. They played with a tremendous attitude. They were highly motivated, and I think at the end of the season, they can be very proud of their performance. I know that as their defensive coordinator, I'm very proud of the way they played, overcame some uh, adversity, uh, and they played with an awful lot of resilience. Ramir Brooks, Terry Dunbar, Les Strader, Chuck Benedict, and Jamal Edwards manned the trenches with a searing sense of purpose. Linebackers Harry Silvis, Kevin O'Malley, Josh Myers, and Burt Byer made up the finest linebacking core in the PAC. And Owen George, Chad Jam Pedro, Steve Specka, Jeff Jeffers, 
Ben Hayes, and Mike Vaughn roamed the secondary with poise and panache. Together, John Banaszak's defense prescribed pain in huge doses. Can't get away from them, okay? Don't let them do it. R.J. Bowers in Grove City visited Washington in a Week 5 showdown with PAC championship implications. Unfortunately for w &J, Bowers put together a career afternoon, rushing for nearly 300 yards and scoring three touchdowns. Jason Barr's touchdown provided little consolation as the Presidents absorbed a 31-7 loss to Grove City. Get your pride back for the kind of outfit that you are. Gentlemen, you're a good football team. You just don't believe it and you've got to show it to yourselves and each other. Play for each other. If you play five plays, you play five plays as hard as you can. If you play 150 plays, you play 150 plays as hard as you can. That's the only thing you can control. We're going to defer if we get a chance, but whichever way we start the ball, guys, that's the, hey, that group goes out and strikes the tempo. Goodbye, God, guys. Let's get our heads in the game and get our emotions up and have some fun. Let's go, boys. Let's go. 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 In week six at Bethany, Coach Luckhart again implored his team to believe, and again they responded. The Presidents roll up 431 total yards, far and away their finest output of the season. The ball is James Bar. Gets to the 10, still on his feet, to the 5, still on his feet to the end zone for the touchdown. Throws for Armitage on a post touchdown. Uh, just one on one coverage out there, and Armitage stepped right inside Williams. Defensively, WJ beat the outman Bison into submission. With their pride on the line, the Presidents played with passion and purpose.
George with the interception out across the 15 to 20 and out to about the 25. Kevin Irvin. As the sun set on a postcard Saturday afternoon at Bethany, the Presidents had their third win of the season and their confidence restored. Well, going into the Bethany game, we kind of had our backs against the wall. The, uh, the, the fact that we had to win every one of our football games in our conference to even have a chance for a, for a tie for a championship uh, put our kids in a better frame of mind, put us in a, put us in a great frame of mind going into the Bethany game. Uh, we put everything together, we, we played well, we played with intensity, and our running game kind of caught up with our passing game at that time, and really after the Bethany game, we kind of went on, on a pretty good roll and felt that we were a real good football team. W and J's offense begins up front, and no one does it better than the dogs of war. Eugene Crosby, Rob Phillips, Keith Balco, Jason Matuzic, R.J. Drucci, T.J. Sursik, and Adam McMahon. Tight ends Matt Blodgett and Todd Matovich are equally adept in the trenches or on the receiving end of a Brad O'Malley pass. Wideouts Ryan Silvis, Dave Armitage, Jim Moore, and Chad Adams put the thrill back in WJ football with circus catches good for big games. Fullbacks Mike Paul and Jim Fiore make the tough blocks and the tough yards look easy. And Jason Barr retired his helmet, but not before he places his name in the WJ record book as the third leading rusher of all time. Quarterback Brad O'Malley completes the pack.